Hey guys, I was uh, looking over uh, this book I have called Logical Chess Move by Move by Irving Chernev. And I've mentioned it before. It's a book I recommend to beginning players, uh, but the games are enjoyable and very instructive for uh, most players or many players. So uh, I was playing over this game and I thought I'd share it with you. I'm going to have a link to the uh, the book down below in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Like I said, uh, many uh, it's an older book, so a lot of people say, well, a lot of the openings are dated, but really you don't get openings from these types of games. What you do are learning fundamental um, principles about chess. And so let's get right into it here. This is a game between Eugene Lubarsky and Viktor Ivanovich Sultanbeef. I just love that name. I actually looked him up. Uh, Sultan Beef it was a uh, Belgian chess master. From uh, He was born in 1895. So this is a classic game. It's not a long game, but it was a very a very interesting one. Okay, so uh, Lubarski was white and Sultan Beef was black. We start off here with E4, E5. And I actually like this for beginners a lot because a lot of beginners play these double E pawn openings um, and get into these types of systems here. Knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, developing uh, very naturally, and bishop to c5. We have this Italian game that a lot of beginners play, c3, and the idea here is that we want to push d4 and try to fight for the center. And so black here plays a move bishop to b6. And it seems like it's not really provoked, but the idea is, is if black were to play another move, say knight to f6, then white gets this tempo here uh, because of, uh, he gets this tempo, and after he takes, he gets this nice uh, center, and this is already really nice for white. So instead he plays bishop to b6 and just avoids that. Well, d4 comes anyway, and then... Uh, black plays queen to e7, which is the main move here, supporting this, and of course, uh, with the threat of taking on d4. So, for example, let's say um, white were to just play a move, uh, let me think here, like play a move like this, then we can take, and then we win the e pawn. That's just an example. Uh, maybe not the best example, but instead, um, white castles. Okay, knight to f6, attacking the e4 pawn. And here, d5. And this was, I thought, a very instructive moment. Because it seems like white is gaining the initiative. It seems like white is gaining space. And these are uh, somewhat true. I mean, white is increasing his space here. But when we look at this from a positional point of view, there are a few negatives to this move, okay? So first off, let's take a look at how does this bishop feel about the d5 pawn being in its way? It's not very happy, okay? Similarly, our bishop now is quite happy because now he's got an open lane to the f2 square and to the king. Okay, so uh, this move, even though it seems like an attacking move, it seems like a strong move, and is a common move that is made a lot of times by beginners, and actually has been played by a, a small handful of uh, master level players, is not to be recommended in general. And I think it's important to discuss this concept of this tension in the center. Okay, you don't want to necessarily resolve or dissipate that tension unless you can gain an advantage. Because here you're always hoping, okay, you're always hoping that black's going to take here so you can set up this powerful center. Okay, so you don't necessarily want to um, resolve that too quickly. Okay, now, what could you play instead? Well, there's a few moves here. You can play uh, rook to e1, taking care of this uh, e pawn, okay. Uh, what else can you play here? You can uh, you can play um, d five as an option, 
And then there's a more positional option that a lot of uh, players have taken up over the years, which is A4. We see this in other variations as well, but um, kind of uh, giving this light square bishop a place to retreat, but also with this threat of pushing and then pushing these queenside pawns, okay? Now, we're not fearing this capture at the moment because we can't capture here, really, because of this pin, okay? So, any case, getting back to the actual game, d5, not a great move. It's not a blunder, but from a positional point of view, is not to be recommended. Okay, now, before I move on to what Black played, uh, I'm going to give you a little quiz here, and tell me what you think of this move, knight to a5, okay? Uh, you could pause the video. I'll give you a couple seconds here. Pause the video, and tell me what you think of knight to a5, and what would you play with white? Okay, in this position, white can simply retreat the bishop, and there's really no good way to uh, give this knight a way out because you can see all of the squares that the knight can go to are covered. So going to a5 seems, again, like an aggressive move because we're attacking this bishop, but the bishop can just retreat, okay? So here... Uh, black played knight to b8. Now it seems like black is retreating, but it is the best move here. Okay, bishop to d3 is played to protect e4. And now simply d6. Seems like a simple move, but we're opening up our bishop here. We're protecting our e-pawn, and we're going to look to get that bishop back into the game. Okay, or into the game. Okay, h3 is played, looking to uh, um, stop this bishop... And here I want to talk just briefly about the topic of pushing the pawns in front of your king. We have to be very careful about this. And I know in a lot of opening systems, we're pushing our h-pawn or our g-pawn, sometimes our f-pawn in front of our king. But uh, there's a danger to this, and you need to understand it. Okay, Because when you move one of the pawns, what you do is you give your opponent a hook. Okay, And um, I've shown you in... Some of my games, you know, against the uh, like King's Indian or against the uh, Dragon, where you're pushing the H pawn, open up the H file. Well, similarly, when the H pawn is pushed, what pawn do we want to push to attack that hook? We want to attack with the G pawn. Now, right now, we can't do it because if we play, of course, we the the pawn would be hanging and we just lose the pawn and walk into this pin, for example. So we need to prepare it. So how do we prepare it? We play H six. Okay, queen to e2, looking maybe to activate this rook, as well as uh, maybe to bring this bishop here to e3 so that we don't wreck our pawn structure. And now g5. Okay, white now plays knight to h2. The idea is we're adding another defender so that if black were to push this pawn, he would seems like he would lose it, Okay. Now, here's the beautiful move in this game, g4. Simply ignoring that because of the power of our development, okay? Uh, black is going to sacrifice a pawn uh, in order to open up lines for an attack. And this is a concept that we need to look at. Sometimes our pawns just are not worth the time to that we spent to try to defend them. So we can use them in a way to buy time. Okay, so here, h takes g4, and now we can't take it because we only have two attackers and white has two defenders. So what does black play? Okay, this is where we are actually sacrificing the pawn with rook to g8. Okay, and white grabs the h-pawn. Okay, so we didn't care about that h-pawn because we're buying time to bring our pieces to an attacking point. Okay. Now, there's two good moves in this position. We can take with the bishop, but the better move is black takes with the knight. Okay, We're attacking this bishop. We're attacking this knight. This knight, of course, is a key defender of this king. And uh, we're winning our, you know, one of our pawns back. Okay, So here, uh, by the way, knight takes g4 would not be good because of bishop takes g4. And now after this queen moves, we have bishop to f3 attacking. 
Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, as you'll see in a second, bishop to h3 is also possible, but is not as effective as we'll see. But it's also good. Okay, bishop to f3. And again, this is not what happened in the game. And here, if white were to play something like g3, then uh, again, I'll give you a moment. What would you play is black. There's two good moves here. Okay, in this position, you have ma two mates in two. You can play queen to h4, and then queen to h1 is unstoppable. Or you can play rook to g3 check. Notice this f pawn is pinned. Okay, and that was a key feature of this particular game. Okay, rook takes g6, or g3, king to h2, and now we have queen to h4 mate. Okay, so let's go back. So again, that's why we cannot take this knight. Okay, so instead, um, white tries to relieve the pin, and here you take on h2. This brings the king out to the h4 and allows us to bring a piece in with tempo. So, um, you know, we talk about the different parts of chess that that we look at when we're looking at if we're winning or, and one of them, of course, a big one is material. You know, do I have more power, more force than my opponent? But here uh, we also look at need to consider the element of time. How efficient can we be in bringing our pieces to attack and defend? And here uh, black brings in his queen with great efficiency because he's hitting this king with check. Okay. King to G1. And now, again, we're just going to threaten mate with king to h3. And after g3, we're almost almost done here, okay? Rook to h8, threatening mate on h2 or h1. Okay, and f3. And finally, uh, why don't you find the final move of the game and at which black resigned? Again, I'm going to give you a couple seconds, but you could pause the video and think about it for a few seconds. And here, very simple move. Um, black removes the defender, deflects the defender with bishop takes e3 check. Of course, if the queen moves, we have queen to h2 as mate. Just going back here. So here, uh, this would be a mistake because now the king can escape. Okay? So in this position, after bishop takes e3 check, White resigned. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I was just playing over that game, and even though it's kind of a quick and simple game, it really illustrates a lot of fundamental principles that you need to know as a chess player. And there's all these little nuggets that come along when you study these games. Um, and again, this was a miniature, but there are some longer, more positional games, uh, like with Capablanca and stuff, in this book, Logical Chess Move by Move. Um, by Chernev. So again, I put the link down below with the Amazon link. I think it's a great book. If you're just starting out in chess or kind of a beginning intermediate player, I really think it's just one that you need to uh, need to kind of absorb and get all the lessons from that as you're moving along. Okay. So have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and I'll talk to you next time.